All right, so this video is going to show us how to make a lab report in an Excel document, okay? And we choose to make a lab report in an Excel document uh, simply because the data is really, the values and the tables are the, the most important component that we want to preserve for later on. And, you know, um, writing things like the title, the introduction, the method is not as convenient in Excel. However, um, it would be better in Word. However, we're, again, more interested in conserving the data and the figures and so forth. So, uh, let's look at what we need to make a good lab report. We need a title. We need an introduction. We need a, a method section, uh, which is like a recipe. We need a data section. Um, and then we need to have a, a results section and a conclusion within that results section. So sometimes data and results will go together and sometimes you'll have, and that, that's usually what you do is data and results, and then you have a conclusion section. Okay, and then the nice thing about an Excel sheet is if you want to store any uh, spreadsheets or any uh, huge amounts of data at the bottom, it's easy to do. We wanna make sure that our report doesn't extend past a single kind of screenshot, screen view. So you don't want to have to cause your reader to move this uh, direction, right? You want them to be able to just look at what's um, on their screen and go up and down and see everything by scrolling back and forth, okay? So make sure you, you focus on that. The title, pretty self-explanatory, introduction, um, explaining to everybody why you're doing what you're doing, how you're doing it, right? Um, the methods section, um, and so, you know, these aren't any different than your um, Chem 105 stuff, so um, we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about these. Um, your methods section generally can be a, a, a recipe, a, a list, doesn't need to be have um, a narrative unless the method requires it, right? Um, and then your your data section, you're going to want to have figures and tables that you deem necessary. And every figure needs to have a figure caption. And that'll label the figure, figure one, figure two, figure three, whatever. And then it'll at least have two sentences, two complete sentences. And that's true of, of um, fig figures and tables. All right. And then you also want to have a conclusion uh, and uh, the results section should have a narrative that talks through and refers to all of the figures. All right. So in the results here, we're talking about figure one, figure two, table one, and kind of describing it. And sometimes you'll say, well, that's just repetitive. We did the figure caption, but that's okay. Um, people want to be able to look at the caption or the figure and quickly re see the caption, know what's going on. But also in the end, when you're going through your results section, if the figures are far away, you don't want to have to go back and, and find them. You want an explanation of what the figures are um, that present the results. And then you also want to have in here some sort of information about um, your hypothesis as to why the results were the way they were and what kinds of things you might find in the future. Okay, very good. Any questions? Um, so I have to have figure captions on all the figures? That's right. And, uh, you know, we did you take Chem 105? Yeah, I took Chem 105. So all the different components in terms of labeling the figures is important, right? Applying a data fit if there is a, a relationship, right? If you expect a linear relationship applying a linear relationship or the appropriate relationship if it's quadratic and you expect that. All right. Anything else? No, I think I got that. All right. Good. Thanks.